When your molecule has an OH group on it, you know you've got an alcohol. And last year when you tried to name alcohols, you probably found that it typically ended um, with ol. So things like propanol, butanol, 2-methylpropan-2-ol. All of these have that ol ending on the end. However, this year you're quite likely to come across the fact that there are going to be higher priority functional groups um, which have a higher priority when it comes to that ending. And these functional groups are new to you. Some like aldehydes, ketones, acid chlorides, amides, and esters on top of carboxylic acids which you came across last year. And when that OH group is present on any of those, um, we name it like a side group. So things like 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, or 3-hydroxybutanol, or 2-hydroxypropanamide. Now, from last year, you also know that most of your alcohols um, are going to be clear, colorless liquids, and that they don't actually change the color of damp red or blue litmus. In other words, that they're neutral. From last year, you also should know that alcohols can be classified into three distinct groups, your primary, your secondary, and your tertiary, and all that depends on how many carbon atoms are directly bonded to the carbon that has the OH group on it. Now, you also saw that that was important last year because they form different products or they react differently when it comes to oxidation reactions. Last year, we did tell you that primary alcohols oxidize to something called a carboxylic acid. The reality, though, is that it does oxidize to form an aldehyde first very quickly, and then it further, oxidized, uh, further oxidizes towards a carboxylic acid. So, in terms of your observations, nothing changes. Permanganate, acidified permanganate, is still a deep purple color which turns colorless and doesn't require heat to do that, so it finishes the reaction in about a minute or less. Your acidified dichromate is still an orange color, and it's only a mild oxidizing agent, so you do need to apply heat for that reaction to complete. And your final color, for dichromate does turn into a greenish, well, green or blue color. They'll accept either in your exam. Now, as for secondary alcohols, last year we told you that they oxidized to form ketones. We didn't need to get you to draw the structure for ketones since it wasn't a part of NCI level two, but ketones are new for NCI level three, so be expected to draw the structure for that. And all you do is you swap off an OH for a double bond O, and you make sure that you also remove a hydrogen as well, just because carbons have to have four bonds, always, and only four bonds, that rule doesn't change. As for tertiary alcohols, that doesn't change compared to last year, they don't oxidize at all, so nothing should happen when you add dichromate or permanganate to either of those. Same as last year, alcohols also do substitution reactions with reagents such as thionyl chloride, SOCl2, and they were called substitution reactions because all you did was swap out an OH group for a Cl atom and you made a haloalkane or a chloroalkane in this case. Now new to you this year might be the fact that alcohols can form a um, new functional group called an ester. Esters are new for NCO level 3 and there's two ways you can do that. You can use an alcohol and a carboxylic acid or you can use an alcohol and an acid chloride. From NCEA level two, you also saw that alkenes could undergo dehydration reactions with concentrated sulfuric acid. Now in this flask to your right is a flask containing an alcohol such as ethanol. And I'm going to add some concentrated sulfuric acid to that. Notice that as soon as I do that, bubbles begin to form. Those bubbles which form are bubbles of ethene gas. And I can collect that gas by using an inverted test tube that's been submerged in water. Notice the bubbles forming inside that test tube. 